The first month of a new year comes with a lot of reflections on the past and future. But as you do so, be careful not to dwell on the negatives. Instead, surround yourself with positive people, books, and other sources that can help to push you forward. If you're looking for a new hobby, we share an idea with you, plus tips to manage your finances and some affirmations to kickstart your year. This is Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Adrian Atkinson. Welcome. How many more must die because of reckless drivers? How fast is too fast? Make we take time, no man? Obey the rules of the road. Drive with care. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Thursday, January 5, 2023. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says government in partnership with stakeholders will be providing robust intervention in support of mental health on the island. Mr. Holness says the program, which will include the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the church and other stakeholders, will be done to change the culture of persons not seeking help when they are in crisis. According to the Prime Minister, too many Jamaicans are suffering in silence with multiple issues. Compounding those challenges, he says, is not knowing where to get help. Somebody to sit and talk with you, somebody to give you advice, even for the point of just offloading, break down and cry, helps you to get over it and get past it and to develop the inner strength and the renewed hope and faith that you will overcome the crisis. The Prime Minister was speaking yesterday at the Heal the Family, Heal the Nation National Day of Prayer. The action from the government comes in the wake of a murder-suicide of a couple in Manchester and a possible case of suicide by a police officer this week. It's not something that the government should leave up to chance. It is something that we have to be instrumental, deliberate and proactive in ensuring that we intervene before the crises in people's private lives become a public health matter. The Prime Minister brought home the point that tackling mental health from a whole-of-nation approach will align the moral standards and cultural practices of the society in keeping actions that support growth. Residents of Kensington, Tuller Castle and surrounding communities in St. James are tapped to benefit from improved road and water infrastructure. Minister Without Portfolio in the Office of the Prime Minister, Robert Morgan, made the commitment at a recent staging of the Sam Sharp Flames of Freedom Ceremony and Celebratory Concert. The roadway leads to the historical site where the 1831 Christmas Rebellion, led by national hero, the right excellent Samuel Sharp, began. Minister Morgan says infrastructure development continues to be a major priority for the government. Included in those plans is the construction of the Montego Bay Perimeter Road. The Montego Bay Perimeter Road is going to bypass the traffic on Howard Cook Boulevard. So those of you who go to do business in Montego Bay will have an easier time coming home. The Ministry of Justice is encouraging persons who wish to migrate or take up employment overseas to take up the offer of having their criminal records expunged. Only persons who meet certain criteria are eligible. The first is that the offense on your criminal record must be punishable by a non-custodial sentence, which means you did not have to go to prison for it. And the second is that you receive imprisonment that did not exceed five years. Also, persons applying for expungement must not have any other criminal conviction during the rehabilitation period. The information was given by senior policy analyst at the Justice Ministry, Shanique Graham, on Get the Facts recently. It can be the difference between a fresh start and a do-over at life, yeah. because at the end of the day, you are not your mistake. And we recognize that, and that's why the Ministry of Justice is on a drive to give people that second chance so they can be productive members of society. Between April and October of 2022, the Justice Ministry received 1,293 applications for expungement. Persons may contact the Ministry of Justice at 876-906-4923 for further details. In other news, the Transport Authority will begin motor vehicle examinations on January 9 to process the renewal of road licenses that will expire on March 31, 2023. In a press release on Tuesday, the Transport Authority said the early start to process vehicles is to facilitate the submission of road license applications by February 1, which is the start of the 2023-24 road licensing period. For quicker processing, persons may use the online application process. 
Delivery services are also offered upon request. Meanwhile, the authority is reminding customers that all its offices are now cashless facilities. Therefore, customers may pay for services at select external payment partners. Applicants must meet the approved Transport Authority standards and requirements to receive a road license. The authority is reminding stakeholders that failure to complete the renewal process by March 31, 2023 means that their road license will become invalid as of April 1, 2023. For further details, persons may call toll-free at 888-991-5687, customer care at 876-618-0959, or visit the website at www.ta.org.jm. And finally, Prime Minister Andrew Holness has joined a throng of Jamaicans who are expressing deep sadness at Wednesday's sudden passing of Ambassador Richard Bernal. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says Ambassador Bernal gave committed service to Jamaica and elevated the country's status and relations with bilateral and hemispheric partners. During his professional career, Dr. Bernal was Jamaica's ambassador to the United States of America and permanent representative to the Organization of American States. He was also a member of the Board of Directors of the Inter-American Development Bank and a chief trade negotiator for the Caribbean community, CARICOM. As the Director General of the Caribbean Regional Negotiating Machinery, Ambassador Bernal had responsibility for trade negotiations for CARICOM. Prime Minister Holness says Dr. Bernal represented the people of Jamaica with honor, dignity, and professionalism. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. I'm delighted that we're able to be back in the face to face environment. We cannot deny the fundamental intelligence behind extending the school year from five to seven. Our history shapes our future. Follow along to catch the Ministry of Education and Youth year in review on January 6, 2023. Keep your eyes fixed as you flip through our Jamaica magazine. Don't miss it. This year, more than any other year, demonstrates quite graphically what economic growth means for Jamaicans and why it is important for every single Jamaican. The Jamaican economy performed above expectations in 2022, averaging growth of 5.2% between January and September. Export earnings rose to 933 million US dollars, while the country's net international reserves remained above 4 billion US dollars. At the end of September 2022, total revenues were 40.4 billion dollars above budget, including 35 billion from tax revenue. There was also this. There will be no new taxes. consecutive fiscal year. It really shows that the economy is on a sound footing. Business and consumer confidence, employment and productivity also performed above projected levels. Global rating agencies took note. On a positive downward trend is inflation, coming out at 9.9% at the end of October. In May, the Jamaica Stock Exchange expanded its reach to Ghana. A lot is going right with Jamaica. To drive economic growth, MSMEs were provided with access to credit to encourage startups, innovation, and investment. Never has so much private equity financing been available for small and medium sized businesses and early stage companies in Jamaica. The Development Bank of Jamaica, the DBJ, provided over $3.65 billion to aid business development and COVID 19 recovery efforts. 600 million was used to ease the impact of high petrol costs on public passenger vehicle operators. The DBJ also facilitated grant funding through the Boosting Innovation, Growth and Entrepreneurship Ecosystem Biggie Project. It really helped your business to position itself to grow. Partnership with the private sector secured a pool of 15 million US dollars. And the Exim Bank was on board, providing 100 million dollars to assist small and medium-sized enterprises expand their businesses online. When we pursue sustainable policies, ultimately the people are better off. 
in service to the public, a $7.2 billion social intervention program was put in place. Jamaicans saw a portion of their electricity bills paid off by the state. Support was increased for students on the PATH program, and one-off grants were made to public servants earning $1.5 million or less per year, as well as to NIS and social pensioners. Import duty was lowered on electric vehicles, while rechargeable batteries were exempt from GCT. Facilitating steps to a digital economy, the Bank of Jamaica rolled out its Jamdex, and the Finance Ministry closed out 2022 on a high note with the signing of wage agreements and settlement under the new compensation structure with public sector workers. The first payment was made in December to employees who have accepted the package. We have demonstrated this year in no uncertain terms that economic growth matters for every single Jamaican. Nutritious food, succulent dishes, superior workmanship, and excellent service. Jamaica is on the go. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's harness the indomitable spirit of our most valued resource, our people. Let's support our local businesses. After all, buying Jamaican means building Jamaica. It's a new year and new beginnings. So what's on your list of new things to try? Is gardening one of them? Well, let's get you started. Urban gardening is the cultivation of vegetables, fruits, aromatic plants and herbs in an enclosed space or your backyard. It's an ideal way for those with little space to participate in the process of food production, saving money while feeding themselves. Practical application is one of the best methods of imparting new knowledge. The Jamaica 4-H clubs ran with that concept when it set up an urban garden display project at 123 Duke Street in downtown Kingston. This project was born out of the COVID pandemic where we recognize that food production has to become everybody's business. Traditionally, most of our food in Jamaica is cultivated in rural areas. We believe that even if you are in a dormitory community without land space, we believe that there is still an opportunity for you to produce. In this urban model, you would realize that we are demonstrating how you can do air planting, how you can do planting on your fence line, how you can produce food in different medium. And so we are utilizing a fully integrated approach to from you know collecting your own water by generating your own nutrient within the urban garden model setting to be able to produce the food that you will eat. There are a few vital things that plants need to grow. These include sunlight, proper temperature, moisture, air, and nutrients. One of the basic pieces of technology inside our urban model garden it's to demonstrate rainwater harvesting. From your roof, you're collecting your water, not only your roof, but just anywhere there's a runoff, because it could be a runoff underground, and what you want to do is to be able to have some storage capacity. In the 4 H urban garden, the water is stored underground to ensure there is more available space on the surface. Of course, your environment will determine the most effective setup for your system. One of the good things about Jamaica, other than when we have night, we always have sunlight. There are some plants that require a lot more lighting than others. And so one of the things we demonstrate or we, we share with urban gardeners is where you put what. So there are some plants that you can do indoors. There are some plants that will strive and do better if they were to be grown outdoor, whether you're using container, you're using your your, your your fencing, you're using backyard, front yard, or your rooftop. 
Another feature that is demonstrated here is composting. To my right is our composting area, and we have a rotor composting bin, as well as we have a, a regular bin. And in fact, just about all the vegetative matter and the, 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 the waste from the birds and the animals um, across there are in fact all placed into our composters and that is broken down to provide organic matter. Because again, you know, your, your soil needs that for aeration, it needs it to add humus, and, um, and that's what is going to allow your plants to grow well. And all this can be done in your own space. Livestock is another avenue you can choose in your urban gardening. Rabbit rearing is an excellent source of protein, and it doesn't require much space. You can also use the plants in the garden to feed them. Other animals can be included, such as chicken and fish. We do a lot of different birds here. You can do your ornamental fish, you can do your tilapia, you know. Um, so, and you can also do your, your, your domestic hens. But that's something we are also promoting, is to get back to those um, domestic hens for eggs and meat. There are many things you can do in terms of livestock. It's as, as almost as diverse as you're going for crops. To replicate this model in your urban space, speak with your Jamaica 4-H Club's parish officer. You can receive seeds and other planting material to get you started. One of the biggest threats right now in the world is not war or COVID is really to have a sustainable supply of food. And the view is that no longer can we only rely on the traditional food producer. I think food production has to become everybody's business. And I think the extent to which we are able to get all our people to produce some of what you will consume, I think is one of the greatest steps we can take in looking at the phenomenon of food sustainability. A strategy the Jamaica 4-H Society has started to aid in maintaining sustainable food within communities. And if you haven't begun the process in your space yet, you can start now. institutionalizing our national identification system. What I can tell you is that I am working assiduously within the boundaries of the bureaucracy of government to try and make changes happen. On Emancipation Day, Madam Speaker, we will see the return of the float and street parade. The government was on the move in 2022, unlocking new milestones, new achievements, and new opportunities for growth. Catch these highlights and more in our Year in Review, right here on this station. Money and wealth management is a year-round conversation, but it takes on a more practical reality at the start of the year. That's why we've put this together to give you some pointers. My presentation today is on getting the best bang for your budget. Budgeting, simply defined, is creating a plan to spend your money. Good budgeting, however, is ensuring that you're spending less than you earn. I know budgeting can be hard. You make a budget and you find it difficult to stick to it. But it's one of the best ways to keep track of where your money is going every month. And then you can identify what changes you need to make in order to reach your financial goals. When making your budget, your budget should include things like your needs, your wants, your savings, 
your investments, and your emergency fund. So typically what we're saying is that your money monthly should be going towards savings, your bills and utilities, your insurance, and your emergency fund. You also would want to ensure that when you're making your budget, you give every dollar a job and keep track of your spending. Keep a financial journal if necessary. This will help to keep you on track and you can record and identify the things that you're actually spending your money on. So, one of the first things you'd want to do when you're creating your budget is create a financial plan and it will help you to map out the actions that you need to take towards achieving these goals. And please ensure that you put your short-term as well as your long-term goals in your financial plan. After you've created your financial plan, then you'd want to identify all your streams of income. Your streams of income is not only your nine to five, and that's a mistake that a lot of us make. What about your other passive incomes? What about the earnings you make from your skills? You might be getting an inheritance. You might be getting an annuity. You might be the type of person to buy and sell things. You have to account for every single dollar you make. And likewise, if you're going to account for all your earnings, you will also have to account for all your monthly expenses. And your monthly expenses is not only your utility bills. A lot of times we, we, we neglect to include the other things that we have to spend on. Sometimes the simple things like our personal care, your groceries, your hair care, your wants. Some of us have things that we have to do to maintain our mental health. Include those things in your budget. All things must be accounted for so you identify where all your income is coming from and you identify all your expenses. So now, let's uncover some of those bad financial habits that are wrecking our financial future. And while it's easy to identify some of our big expenditures, sometimes it's uncovering some of those smaller, more sneakier daily expenses that will save you a lot of money in the long run. My first question to you is, are you paying your bills on time? Paying your bill late comes with penalty fees and these fees add up. <music> Implementing the right debt payoff strategy, you can pay off your debt quickly, end up saving more, and you end up having more money towards your other financial goals. Prioritize paying off your debts. Things that we tend to let slip through as well. Most banks have a charge that is associated with going to the ATM. Not to mention if you decide that you're going to use another bank's ATM because it's more convenient, then you end up paying two or three times the amount. So you have to keep a close eye on your money, guys. You have to keep track of these fees. Cutting out unnecessary expenses will actually help you to save a lot of money each month. So let's quickly talk about some of the money habits that we need to develop. Pay yourself first. Take out money for your savings. Put it in an investment account if you have to. Have a separate bank account, but pay yourself first. Build up on your retirement fund. Increase your deductions. This will not only help you to put more money towards your retirement saving, but it also reduces your taxable income. And try to make it at least the amount that your employer will match. That's like getting free money. Who doesn't want free money, right? Save for the future. Saying things like YOLO or FOMO can make you feel like you need to spend all your money now. But there needs to be a balance. Enjoy your life now, but be sure that you're saving money for the future and working diligently towards your goals. Live below your means. If you are spending more than you earn, at some point, you're going to have to require credit to cover the rest. If you find yourself having to spend, having to get credit to pay for basic things, then you need to revisit what you're doing. To grow your money and create real wealth, you need to start investing. Invest your money and help to build up and secure your financial future. Last but not least, 
invest in a critical illness plan, guys. So I'll end by saying, not budgeting, not budgeting your money, combined with bad financial habits, not saving, can leave you vulnerable to unexpected emergencies, living from paycheck to paycheck, not to mention not having enough money for retirement. You can achieve your financial goals. It's just a matter of prioritizing, sticking to your budget, and tracking your spending. I really hope that those who are listening to my voice will take an introspection of themselves and check out how they have been operating the motorcycle. Are you operating with an helmet, an elbow pad, a knee pad, a jacket, a shoulder pad? Are you wearing shoes instead of slippers? Have you removed the mirrors from the motorcycles? Obedience, better than sacrifice, do the right thing. Are you going to ensure that you buckle up in the motor vehicle and the persons in the motor vehicle behind your back, your passengers, are they buckle up? Are you going to ensure that? Are you going to give yourself adequate time to reach your destination so that you don't have to be in any ears, so that you don't help to clog up the health sector? Nobody should be going to the hospitals because of traffic crashes. Nobody. They are preventable, they are avoidable. We can make better choice than that. This is where our journey ends, but only for today. Do join us again tomorrow when we'll bring another informative program. In the meantime, stay connected via our website, gis.gov.jm. And while you're online, send your feedback to Jamaica Magazine at gis.gov.jm or via tweet at GIS News. You may also find us on all the major social media platforms and through our mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Jamaica.